All right, hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, the plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. Currently, we are in 1 Kings chapter 15. And um, remember, there's a, in, in the Kings, um, the, the, the narrative is from the kings of Israel. And then, of course, you have an overlapping where it talks about the kings of, uh, of Israel and then also the kings of Judah. Even though it's a divided nation, uh, it's still God's nation. And then when we get to the uh, the, uh, the, the writings of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, we will see that the narrative focuses on the kings of Judah. So you have the same thing, the king, a narr uh, going back and forth between the kings of Judah and the kings of um, of, um, of Israel. Um, Chronicles narrative also will focus more on the lineage of uh, David, which is the genealogy of Jesus. In Kings, we're focusing more on the political. That's why we see a lot of political um, narrative here. You know, how the kings, the ruthlessness of kings and their rulership here. We won't see that much in Chronicles, okay? Um, and so, as it goes, we have been seeing the, the rise and fall of different kings, both good and bad. Mostly bad, mostly wicked. And so every now and then we see a good king, and Asa is one of these good kings for the most part. Alright, so let's uh, get into it here. Um, First Kings chapter 15. In the 18th year of Israel's king, Jeoboam, son of David, Abijam became king over Judah and reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makkah, daughter of Abishalom. Okay, Abishalom. I'm sorry about that. Abishalom walked in all of the sins his father before him had committed. He was not completely devoted to the Lord his God as his ancestor David had been. But because of David, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem to raise up his son after him and establish Jerusalem. But David did what was right in the Lord's eye and did not turn aside from anything he had committed all the days of his life except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And of course, this was David's adultery Bathsheba. She was married to Uriah. David tried to cover his sin of adultery. And then Bathsheba got pregnant. He tried to cover it by having pulling Uriah off of the combat uh, field, hoping he would go home, sleep with his wife. She was a very beautiful woman. Um, which is kind of stupid if you think about it because wouldn't people have known how that boy looked like David anyway uh, but Uriah being the faithful soldier and he actually died because of his faithfulness David sent him back set him up and he was killed in battle and so this is a permanent mark on David's record notice God is not shy uh, to mention that when you look at a lot of Christian and Christendom today, they cover a lot of people's sin. God God doesn't do that. Uh, verse 3, there have been war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of Rehoboam's life, and the rest of the events of Abijam's reign, along with all his accomplishments, are they not, are they not written in the historical records of Judah's kings? Now, um, uh, and there was also war between Abijam and Jeroboam. Now, uh, just so you know, I read from the Homey Christian Standard Bible. I love this this translation. I think it's one of the most accurate translations. However, there are a lot of, sometimes, there are a few places, and this is one of them where language doesn't, you know, um, if you're used to the King James, and I'm also used to the King James, you will note right away that there's kind of the way they phrase it in the way um, the King James phrase it is different. All right, so, but the king of Judah's, and actually kind of makes my point when I say that when we get to Chronicles, it's from the king, it's written from the kings of Judah's perspective. Verse 8, 
Abijam, Abijam rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David and his son Asa became king in his place. We're going to see more about Asa because remember this is the king of Judah. So we're gonna, there's a mention of it here excuse me, and we'll see more of his life in Chronicles. Verse 9, in the 20th year of Israel's king, Jeroboam, Asa became king of Judah and reigned 41 years in Jerusalem. And his grandmother's name was Micah, daughter of Abishalom. Um, Abishalom. Okay. Asa did what was right in the Lord's eyes. Now, remember I said that Asa is going to be a good king. All right. He's going to be a good king. The pro what is sad about Israel's history here is we keep we see this. Okay, so doing okay, so for for forty one years it's going to be a great reign, and then it's going to end. And you see, it's going back and forth between good kings and bad kings, and which I don't get why people don't see. We we kind of see it today, somewhat in our time how presidential reigns last but more so because of our government you have to look at the Senate, the Senate and Congress how they reign and depending on who's in power um, the, the people will be affected by that um, verse 11 Asa did what was right in the Lord's eyes as his ancestor David had done, he banished the male cult prostitutes from the land and removed all of the idols that his father had made. Now, meaning the people before him. Now, it is also important to note, okay, um, when you, even though the narrative here focuses on the leadership, keep in mind the land was filled with sin okay and that is why when God would judge the land even though he would just sometimes he would judge the land through the, the wickedness of the king the land the, the 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 people were doing this all over this was all these sins were all over Israel verse 13 he said he also removed his grandmother Mecca from being queen mother because she had made an obscene image of Asherah Asa chopped down her obscene image and burned it in the Kidron, Kidron Valley. Now this this obscene image uh, might have been a very perverse image, a male genital, okay, that people were actually worshiping it. And as I told you before, most of most of <laughs> um, um, pagan worship had to do with some kind of sexual perversity perverse perversion okay most most of it all right and you kind of see this here now keep this in mind she this is his grandmother okay we can and we read that his grandmother made this image he, he and he destroys it I, I like Asa and I like righteous kings because they stand up for what is right as opposed to other kings who don't. And that's just to give you an example, when you look at prosecutors, you look at cops, uh, police, chief of police, who stand up for bad cops. You look at politicians <coughs> who stand up for bad politicians, corrupt politicians. And they cover for them. They make laws to protect them. We can go on and on and on. But notice Asa, a good king, a righteous king, a just king, but say, look, anyone, including my grandmother. So he removed her from being queen mother. Verse 13, the high places were not taken away. And this is going to be a, this is, one of, this is a bad mark. In other words, of all of the good things that he did, he didn't take away, uh, he didn't take away the high places. Now, the high places were elevated plots of land or ground. Okay. Um. Jerusalem itself, the city of Jerusalem, is on a high elevation. 
And it's, it was thought by the pagans, the, high, the higher up you get, the closer you get to the heavens, the closer you're, you're getting to uh, the deities that you worship. So they would have these high places that were up, and they would play, you have these different pagan altars. So it wasn't just high plot, but they were also places of worship. And so the, the, the sad thing is that Asa, Asa destroyed a lot of stuff and, and brought great reforms in, but he left the high places. And that's, you know, that it, it was just an easy uh, way for people to fall back into the sin that he was actually trying to destroy. Um, verse 14 again, the high places were not taken away, but Asa's heart was completely devoted to to the Lord his entire life. He brought his father's consecrated gifts and his own consecrated gifts into the temple, silver, gold, and utensils. Now, also keep this in mind that these high places were alternative places to worship when God had chosen one place to worship, and that was the temple that Solomon had built. So there was no need for the uh, high places, okay? Or the high, you know. Verse 13, there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. Um, another interesting thing is that we, we think about civil war. For example, our American in America, we've had one civil war and the bloodiest war over slavery. Um, but they had civil wars almost in every reign in every kingdom. Right? They would have these wars, these outbursts. They fighting like they were different nations. But in each case, they were nations under God. Verse 17. Israel king Basha went to war against Judah. He built Ramah in order to deny anyone access to Judah's king, Asa. So Asa withdrew all the silver and gold that remained in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the treasury of the warrior palace and put it into the hands of his servants. The king, then King Asa sent to Ben-Hadden, son of uh, Timberman, Tim, Tim Brahmanan, son of Hezron, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, saying, there is a treaty between me and you, between my father and your father. Look, I have sent you a gift of silver and gold Go break your treaty with Bashan, king of Israel, so that he will draw from me. But hadn't listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the city of Israel. He attacked um, Ijon, uh, Dan, um, Abeleth, Makkah, and Shemareth. Shemareth. Uh, again, forgive me for butchering the pronunciation of these names. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And the whole land of Nephetili, and when Basha heard about it, he quit building Ramah and stayed in Tezra. And when King Asa gave a command to everyone, without exception to Jerusalem, they carried away the stones of Ramah and timbers and Basha that, that the timbers Basha had built it with. Then King Asa built um, Gerba of Benjamin and Mizpah with them. And the rest of the rest of okay, the rest of all the events of Asa's reign, along with his might and all of his accomplishments in the cities he's built, are written in the historical records of Judah, king of Israel. But in his old age, he developed disease in his feet. Now, what is interesting about this, when it says that he developed disease in his feet, this disease in his feet was a judgment of from God for this act. So let's kind of go back for a moment here and see what he did wrong. Um, Asa, again, was a flawed man, he was a righteous man, and then you cannot even say that he was righteous when it, uh, when it came to his contemporaries, right? Um, what is interesting about this, when he takes the treasures, look at verse 18. So Asa withdrew all the silver and gold that remain in the treasures of the Lord's temple and the treasure of the war palace and put it in the hands of his servant. So when he did this and gave it to Ben-Hadden, in other words, it sort of paid him 
for this. This was something that God rebukes him about. Now, uh, we don't have it in this story. We're not going to dwell on it. We'll get it later in, in Chronicles. But God actually rebukes him for this and says, you, you, you paid this man instead of coming to me. Okay? And this is why he was diseased in his feet. Because God... Um, because God um, had, uh, was, you know, kind of judged him for that. God had judged him for that. So it says, um, um, verse 24, that, that Asa wrestled with his father, was buried in the city of his ancestors, David, and then his son Jehoshaphat became king of this place. And we we're going we're gonna to become very familiar with Jehoshaphat. He's another good king but weird in terms of his loyalties. Verse 25, um, and Nadab, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in the second year of Judas, king of Asa, and he reigned over Israel two years, and they did what was evil in the Lord's sight, and he followed the example of his father and sin, and sin he had caused Israel to commit. Now, keep that statement. He called Israel to commit to sin. I want you to keep this in in in, in and in your mind only because notice you do have the sin of the king but you also have the sins of the people they sinned as well verse 27 then Basha son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar conspired against Nadab and Basha struck him down at Gibbethon of the Philistines while Nabod and all of Israel were besieging Gibbethon in the third year of Judah's king King Asa, Bashan killed Nadab and reigned in his place. When Bashan became king, he struck down the entire house of Jeroboam. He did not leave Jeroboam any survivors, but destroyed his family according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken against his servant, uh, through his servant, Ahaji the Shilonite. Uh, this was uh, this was because Jeroboam had provoked the Lord God of Israel by the sins he had committed and it caused Israel to commit. So keep that in mind. Remember Jeroboam built these two <coughs> calf, golden calves and then remember all of Israel worshipped these golden calves. Verse 38. The rest of the events of uh, Nadab Nadab's reign along with his accomplishments are written in historical uh, Israel's king. And there was war between Asa and Basa king of Israel throughout their reigns. And it says that in the third year of Judas king Asa, Basha son of Ahijah became king over Israel and reigned in Tezra. Twenty-four years, uh, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the example of Jeroboam and the sins he had caused Israel to commit. Now it's kind of amazing. Again, we we'll see this continual back and forth. Um, between Israel, how they sin, the king sin, but also keep in mind, it is the people who also sin as well. Now, I, I, I say that also because when you read, if you don't take that into account, which is stated there, it, it may become, you, you question, it's God, um, well, two things, people will say one, we I mean, talk about the Old Testament, the God of wrath, but we continually are seeing here that God is not the God of wrath as much as he's the God of mercy, but he's a God of wrath because people keep rebelling against him. Israel kept rebelling against him. And the idea is that so when God would judge, and then you would, it, it almost seems like innocent people are being judged, innocent people are not being judged. Okay? So innocent people are not being judged. But remember, in general, people are sinning. <laughs> okay, guys, don't forget to like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button. Welcome all your comments. Um, all comments are welcome. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next study.